Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for donating for this run. Um, I'm Mads Brutal, and I have my lovely commentator with me. Hi, everyone. I'm Oh My Queen. I'm partnering up with Mads once again for Inscription, and thank you so much for donating and making me stay awake until 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to have to to really have a high intensity here. Um, so, yeah. World record or bust. Yeah, world record. Um <laughs> So yeah, I found this game uh, while I was walking my dogs in the woods um, a few months ago. I popped it into my floppy disk drive and I started running it. It's Inscription and I'm going to be running the any percent no major glitches category. Um, time will not start here. We have to go through a tutorial first and time will start after this. So we can use this as an opportunity to see the general vibe of the game and see how it works. Um, so. Uh, Queen, do you want to just um, explain, I guess, sacrifices that um, our antagonist here is going to explain to us? Yeah, so basically this is very much the basics of how the game works. Uh, in order to summon units, you're going to have to uh, sacrifice uh, cards that are basically in this first act, squirrels. Uh, and each squirrel is the equivalent of one uh, blood drop that you can see on the cards. So for example, to summon the stoat, you're going to need at least one squirrel. Uh, to summon uh, uh, the wolf, you're going to need at least uh, two, uh, or at least the equivalent of two bloodlines, mm -hmm. in this case two squirrels, of course. So yeah, and once the cards are summoned, they're going to attack automatically, depending on the numbers that they have. The number on the left is uh, the attack amount, and the number on the right is their defense, their health, yeah. more like than defense. Absolutely, perfect. So yeah, we're going to be killing a lot of animals here, or ditching animals, I guess. <laughs> so this is interesting to come right off the Super Metroid run. Um, but we're going to get started here. Uh, I'll count us down uh, with a three count. Um, time will start kind of when I do my first input in, uh, uh, after the next text box. So we'll start in three, two, one, let's go. Um, all right, so inscription is, works in a few different acts and the acts function um, extremely differently from one another. This is act one. Um, this is gonna be a roguelike. So there's gonna be a lot of RNG and a lot of randomness, but we don't have any of that yet. On this first life, um, we're just gonna be doing some basic setup um, for the next ones. Um, so we're gonna be trying to die as quickly as we can while doing that setup. Um, so I'll be kind of just passing turns here and um, kind of going as quickly as I can through that. Um, this uh, this life is completely deterministic, like everything is always the same, so there's not much to talk about here, and I don't set up all that much. Um, I'm just setting up my first death card, which um, y'all can donate for, the name of it. Gonna give a quick update on that. Yes, please. Excellent. So, everyone, you've come through and you're just fabulous. Currently, Bingus is in the lead with $620. <laughs> uh, following, not at all close behind, but giving a great effort, is Airboat with $250. And uh, we still have a quick moment if we want to get that met. Um, I should note that I do need two names for my death cards. I have two of them. So, I guess there first and second will... Uh will be in contention So here. if you want a name that isn't Bingus or Airboat, mm -hmm. you got to get those donations in quickly. Um, okay, Pope, oh, yeah. The Stoat, as you'll see, talks to me sometimes. Uh, so that's going to be irrelevant story-wise. Um, it's RNG whether he talks to me there. It's basically the only RNG in this first, um, first life. And handled out. We get two lives her attempt and oh no here he comes he gets us there's a, <laughs> yeah there's something that Mads did as well before um when you are in the roguelike section you can get uh different things happening different events um some of them oh. are good some of them can be good real quick queen I, you have. I do yeah. need the the oh yeah, the yeah name. of course I assume it's going to be Bingus, though. Okay, yeah. Looks like the first name is definitely going to be Bingus. Okay, cool. So, yeah, explain the altar. So, yeah, um, we saw uh, Matt sacrificing uh, an adder on an altar. And what that does is basically it gives whatever bonus the card that you sacrifice has onto another card. And in this case, the adder has 
poison, which is instant, the equivalent of instant death in this game. Yes. So we wanted to have the instant death on the wolf club, which is... And now it's on our death card, uh, which there's a chance that that'll be in our deck later. Oh, sorry, everyone. A little body horror there. Um, and Leshy's explaining bones to us. Um, yeah, Queen, go ahead and explain that as well. Well, bones are uh, kind of similar to, to blood in this situation because you can still use them to summon creatures, uh, but you get them basically by having creatures defeated or uh, with the... Um, with the cockroach and other cards, it depends. Yeah. Uh, or the stink bug, for example, you need uh, uh, bones to summon the stink bug and whatnot. So this is like sort of like a second currency mm -hmm. um, that you can use to summon cards, uh, and you can definitely build a deck based on either bones or blood drops. Let's say. Yes. Like uh, actual sacrifice. So this is actually the the most important part of the run coming up right here. This. Uh, items. We need some very specific items. If we don't get them, we have to start all the way over from the beginning. Okay, yes. We good. We got the black goat. We got two black goats, actually. Um, so, we want to be using some of these sigils, they're called. They're like the special abilities on these cards. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to giving our squirrels, so our kind of the engine behind our deck, um, some very specific abilities. And... Yeah this um essentially we need to manip the game to give us those abilities and the one we want is the black goats un or worthy sacrifice so every time i sacrifice a squirrel um essentially it's going to count as three sacrifices so we get some really powerful units on the field really quickly and we'll see how that works uh in the next life uh, and we need the next <laughs> death card's name Absolutely, and the second place winner was in fact Airboat. Perfect. Um, I assume there's an inside joke behind that. Aren't all of our names inside <laughs> jokes? True, 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 true. Quick mash here. Try to take a picture of Leshy or this character, this mysterious character who we don't know his name. Um, this death Ooh. card is. Oh, we got the good death card. This is perfect. So. so to kind of um, uh, explain air boat, I can spell. There's a chance that these cards will come in our deck later. Um, there's also a chance that the enemy will play them as well in a certain fight. Um, so these these might come back into our decks. We'll see. And now we're on to the run that we're going to win. But we have to do a touch more setup. We were doing some kind of the escape the room stuff over here intermittently. Um, so we're going to do a little bit more of that. Ah, come on. There we go. Ah. Um, we don't want the contents of those, but we do want the contents of these two. We need the caged wolf. There we go. And we need the squirrel head. So now we're into random territory. Oh, this sucks. Now the real I, game uh, begins. Yes. Ooh, we got really lucky. Um, those offerings are really bad. It was a pretty low chance that I got a good card out of that. Um, but here we go. So we've only seen three different abilities played, so we only get these three offered. So we can guarantee on our totem that the squirrels will get the worthy sacrifice, and they'll count for three. Um, three sacrifices, so three blood. Yes. Um, I guess I can explain totems a little bit for those that are not familiar with the game. Um, but the way that totems work is that they do grant uh, several different bonuses depending on the totem that you have. For example, our opponent right now has a flying totem uh, on wolf creatures specifically. Uh, the symbol tells you what kind of buff it is and the top of the totem, the head that is on top of the totem, tells you which kind of creatures it affects. So basically right now we have the bonus that the uh, black goat usually gives you on squirrels which means that squirrels are worth three uh, blood uh, drops whenever they are sacrificed which means we can summon way more powerful creatures way faster yeah than usual that's one of the central kind of nips that we do here um gonna use some items oops there we go and um, 
goal is going to be to just get some really powerful cards and win on turn one. That's what we're going to be trying to do. Um, so pretty much everything we do is going to be either geared towards getting powerful cards into our deck and removing other ones, right? Um, generally speaking, order of operations is get power powerful cards first, remove them second. Um, but we don't have a ton of control over what our path, what path we can take here. As you can kind of see, there's there's some branching paths. This will power up a card. Um, there's a chance that these will power up health. That's not all that useful. Um, but the first one's always attack. The second one, there's a random chance. But I'm going to be hoping that we can get our wolf up to five damage real early here, because um, that'd be very powerful. Oh, this is this is rough. This is going to be a slow fight. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh man, what am I doing? I meant to pick up Squirrel. We might actually lose this fight, um, which isn't the biggest deal in the world. We can lose one. But um, I'd rather not. Yeah. So while well, Matt's focus is a little bit on this one, and let's hope we can get through it. <laughs> oh, we're fine. Um, we're we're going to be fine here. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Um, for those that aren't familiar with the game, the way that you win is basically by doing a certain amount of damage to your opponent. The scales on the left indicates what's the current damage for both players. But basically, as long as you don't do enough damage to just defeat your opponent fully, um, the game can go <sighs> any way at any moment, the pretty much. The, cor the correct choice was taking the adder there, uh, but it was too tempting to, to take airboat. Um, just for the donations. Yes, okay. So this wolf is, as um, Queen just kind of explained, we need to do five damage to win a fight. Our wolf is now at five. If we draw that turn one, we win turn one. That's fast, that's powerful, we like to, just to see that. And we're on to our first boss, the Prospector. So atmospheric, so good. Um, we're trying to get our caged wolf out in this fight if we can. Doesn't look like it, that's fine. We have to uncage the wolf at some point um, in this run for story progression. There we go, there's gold in them cards. Pass that out. And we should win this in two turns. Perfect. Easy peasy. Um, I do also want, I'm thinking of a lot of things as this is happening as well. I'm looking for another card that has the poison sigil on it, if I can, um, help it. And the, yep, the long elk is the one I wanted. That's perfect. Um, so as we go into the next area, we can do a couple donations here. Maybe, maybe one real quick. Okay, perfect. In that case, we have a $125 donation from Seagull. Let's go, Mads. Love from Hades community. You are a champ. <laughs> oh, thanks, Seagull. I really appreciate it. Um, this is important. So we have this altar here. You can sacrifice a card to it, and you get this um, the boon of the, of the bone lord or something. I don't know. I clicked too fast to read it. Um, that'll give us a bone at the beginning of a, a fight like this. That's good. But even more importantly, I uncaged the wolf there. We'll see much later what that means. Um, turn one win. That's lovely. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go over there. These suck. Those are really bad cards. Okay, so we have another altar so we can put a sigil onto a different card. And this is really important what I'm doing here. We're taking the, the long elk and we're putting it on our stoat. Um, this is going to give it the poison sigil. When I ran this at um, Fright Fatales, I forgot that I did that. Um, so I have to remember this time. <laughs> I have to remember for our, our final boss that I have that ability. As it looks like we got the wolf again. Earn one win. That's a setup for way later in the run. Yeah. Um, so. um, um, we're going to go this way. I want items. 
I guess I could mention what items are. Um, oh, I yeah. mean, we mentioned totems, and uh, probably, uh, you know, some people notice that we have some items on the right uh, that you've been opening up every once in a while. Right. But basically, items are single use um, things, consumables, uh, let's call them, that you can use to gain several different advantages. Usually, anything that is bottled, like that squirrel over there, it just gives you the card that it's bottled up. Um, then you have stuff like the pliers that we used at the beginning of the game, where basically um, the protagonist pulls out one of, uh, of his teeth to uh, put it on the scale and gain an extra point of damage. Um, and then there's something like the fan that grants uh, the flying skill to all of the cards that you currently have on the floor, which means that uh, only cards that have the flying shield can block them, which is which are very few and far in between. So it's basically very good if you wanna send out an all that attack. Yeah. And just do a lot of damage in one go. Items are, are very good. There's a few that can make um, some of the later fights and kinda cheese them. <laughs> um, I personally like having a fan in my inventory for later, um, just for some safety. Um, but extra squirrels are really good, like there's so much that's really good. Okay, the angler. Uh, okay, that's his first phase. It doesn't matter. He has some abilities there, but whatever. Um, yeah, let's do this. Um, this dude. And we'll just win this on turn two. If I would attack the bait bucket, a great white shark would come out, and we do not want that. So um, he throws those down in front of our cards after the first phase but we can go right around him. We get another rare card. Um, let's see. There's a few things that I kind of want. Don't want another long elk. Ugh, these suck. I'll take Child 13. Child 13 is an okay card. It's much better if you're using the other kind of strategy um, with the, the cock unkillable sigil. There's two sig sigils we can put on our um, squirrels, and um, they kind of change the way we play. But we kind of have the, the strong, well, it's not necessarily like determined that it's stronger. They're both quite good. Um, great white shark. But this one is definitely um, has the potential to go faster, I feel like. Like a theoretical upper limit. Okay, I think I'm gonna go over to the fire. Um, and as I do these fights, why don't we... This fight that I might lose actually. Um, why don't we get a couple more donations? Love that. We have $25 from Roadkill Revenge. Uh, good luck on your run, Mads. Thank you for being a supportive friend and an amazing speedrunner and person. Here are $3 for each of my bonks during Spyro and another uh -huh. for good measure. Less than three. I also just want to Thanks. remind everyone that we do have a new incentive open. That is for Hollow Knight and the Path of Pain. So we have currently have $795 towards that, and we're looking to get $10,000. But that is an incredibly difficult platforming section in Hollow Knight, which our runner for that run will do but only if we can make this incentive. So that'll give us more time for Hollow Knight and, you know, grubs. Because who doesn't love those grubs? For sure, those grubs are really cute. <laughs> that keychain is adorable. Um, ooh, another grizzly, nice. Um, that last fight took quite a while. It's fine, that happens sometimes. Um, usually you want to win turn one. Yep, here's a health one. Health ones aren't that great. I like putting on the stoat though. This gives me a little more safety for the final fight. Trying to think. Do I have anything that I really want to get rid of? Yes, I want to get rid of my bullfrog. So I'll probably be going to the altar over there. We were talking about this uh, before the run, actually, but um, the Act 1 is probably the hardest part of the game, even casually, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. When I played this game the very first time, the first part took, the first act took a little bit of attempts. Um, and, and there's definitely a little bit more deck building, even though the acts after actually have way more cards than you do over here. Um, but they just felt a little bit easier to just roll with compared to the first act. Yeah. Maybe it's the fact that, uh, you know, Leshy's so unnerving. I don't know, but. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. I think it's partially because this is a this is a true roguelike. Like if I lose this, it's it's done. I go back to the beginning. Um, and the other ones you can kind of retry fights and things. Um, this is part of it. I should probably warn people about that. <laughs> Taking our teeth out. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Which way I want to go. I mean, everybody likes dentists and likes to go to the dentist. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, so um, I think it's fine. We'll do this. Let's try to thin our deck out a little bit more. Um. Perfect. That's actually a really powerful card now. Okay, we have to get up before we do this fight because we need to get. So we're able to pick that statue up because we uncaged the wolf earlier, which gives us this dagger which we're going to use in this fight. Um, the prospect, or excuse me, not the prospector. This is the trapper and the trader. Boss fight. This one is very annoying. Um, I'm actually just going to kind of be quiet if through this. If, Queen, you want to kind of talk about the strategies here. Um, actually, I wanted to mention um, uh, the knife uh, yeah. because you, you just brought it up. So the reason why we want to use the knife here is because you actually need it for story progression. You are forced to use the knife by this point. Uh, like, this is the last fight that you can use the knife in. Uh, and what it does, it, it simply... Well, I mean, I guess you'll see, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's some more body horror, so be, yeah. be warned. We have warned you in time, on time. Um, yes, I had to do some thinking there. Um, okay, we're good. Airboat to That's the rescue. Item. And yeah, uh, if you're queasy, look away, close your eyes. Uh, I meant your ears. Um, everything, just close everything. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. I had to do some shenanigans with my items to get around the stuff that I threw down. Essentially, uh, in this fight, you get um, pelts when your uh, cards die to his traps, and then you trade those pelts for some of his cards in the second phase to try to make it easier. Um, and we got around it just fine. I'll probably take that. Yes, please. Um, okay. And we took our eye out for four points, so we need a new eye. Oops, there we go. And a secret message. Find salvation in Cuckoo Clock. I think we just might do that. Okay. I don't know. I wouldn't mind staying here and playing with Leffy. Mm -hmm. You know, until the end of time. I think it's okay. Oh, no. Uh, there we go. Another card, Stunted Wolf. Um, and you'll notice we have three ca uh, cards that are also characters. Um, we get the film rolls, Stunted Wolf, the Stink Bug, and the Stoat. We're going to get this ring for safety. Um, we are not going to the item bag. I often do that. But I got this pronghorn that I'm going to put on our Stunted Wolf. So this is like a bifurcated um, strike. He'll hit twice to the left and to the right, but not in front of him. Um, and that's going to be important in this fight now. Coming up. Ooh, spooky. Um, walking right now, uh, you can cover a great amount of distance while the screen is black here, and you can be right at where you need to be. Um, Leshy is going to offer us some... This is why we got the uh, the ring, so we pass this trial. And we get a boon for this fight. Um, I think this has my best odds. Nope. So we only get one boon. That's fine. We have a pretty good setup here. Um, yeah, we got a lot of beefy cards through the whole run, so I think I think you're gonna be good. I yeah. Don't jinx it, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I think actually we might just win in three turns here, um, if my math is correct at least. Um, so the final fight. He has three phases, and we got that stunted wolf just before this fight for a very specific reason. It's going to trigger dialogue between the stunted wolf and the stoat, and I want those two in my hand to start this fight. And you will see why very shortly. So we got this dialogue here. Okay. That. 
So the stoat is going to kill that. And there we go. We finished the first round. I got the magpie ability from him, so I'm going to just grab... Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I'm thinking... No, the I don't. The magpie allows you to pick there one she is. card oh. of your deck. Oh my gosh. Choice. I had a huge brain freeze on what I wanted to take there. Okay, so Stoat's going to kill the, the, the stump that's in the way, and the bifurcated means that he didn't put a stump in front of our uh, stunted wolf, which is really great. And now we have the final, final boss here. The moon. How are we going to get around the moon, queen? This is going to be difficult. It has 40 health. It attacks every slot for one. Oh, it's dead. Uh, in a way that really pisses me off <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as an RPG player. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to be able to no. just kill bosses. No, you're way. supposed to be able to cast death on Kefka or Sephiroth or whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's why we needed that r originally. So that poison oh, sigil did, just, did a ton of work I there. It killed a stump, it killed a mole, oh. and it killed the moon. And now, oh, wait, we weren't in a cabin playing this game. We were a person playing this video game uh, and recording their, their run through. So normally we would meet the character Luke Carter, who is a uh, like a YouTuber who unboxes cards or whatever. But um, we're not going to watch any of his videos. Um, Which and, is a shame. Yes. And we're going to go on to Act 2. I'm going to toss my Act 1 notes off to the side, and we could get maybe three donations here. I love three donations. So we have $25 from Q, putting this towards seeing more of one of my favorite games, Hollow Knight, Path of Pain. We also have $75 from Grub number 21. My palace is lovely, but I can't help but feel like it needs a little something. Ah yes, I know just what, more buzzsaws. And both of these donations are referring to our open incentive, which is the Path of Pain in Hollow Knight. It is a very difficult platforming section, and uh, we really want our runner to show that off. But uh, we're almost a tenth of the way there. So let's work together and kind of just bring in that Bingus spirit and uh, <laughs> get that Path of Pain. I mean, it sounds delightful, yeah. right? Yeah, very sorry that, that Bingus didn't uh, enter our deck, but Airboat did a ton of work, so we're happy with that. Um, so, Act 2, we are going to have a completely different game here. This is Inscription as it was meant to be played on the floppy disk. I'm going to do a quick trick here. I'm going to uh, load up my deck during the screen transition. Um, and a very important moment is going to come up right here. I'm going to be drawing... Um, a pack of cards, and if there's a card in it, it'll save a lot of time. So we're looking for a bone heap. Bone, bone heap, heap, we got bone it. Oh heap. my goodness. There we go. Holy Marathon mark. luck. Let's go. Um, so I'm gonna... Go. There, there's a lot of people in chat kind of confused about the game so far. <laughs> oh, yeah. Th um, stuff happens. Um, yeah. There's it's like a huge on. meta narrative going on here. Um, thinking, yes, I want to do this. Okay. So what we're doing in this fight um, is we're going to use this bone heap right here to um, uh, oh yeah I guess I should explain what the bone heap does. So the bone heap will be powered up by bones and remember bones we get them when things die. Um, so we're going to be trying to like last through this onslaught of cards here and when we finally do uh, we're going to try to be stocking up our bones via these Grave Digger cards. And then power up this Bone Heap to a ton. And when we do Overkill, we're going to be getting foils, uh, currency that we can spend on cards that we want to put into our deck. So now we basically uh, wait. Um, I'm going to be trying to build up a bunch of bones. So again, this is a great time for maybe two donations. We got it. We have $50 from Boo Wire. Bring on the pain! We also have another $50 from Lilith saying, GDQ rocks! I agree. One, one more. Okay, we have $50 from Antha. Less than three bingus! Perfect. So we're getting kind of bad luck here. I'm hoping that we can 
salvage this. That's gonna help. Um, I'm gonna do this, actually. So I'm walking this, I'm just kind of playing this a little safer than I normally would. I'm walking this down to be right at... Um, go. There we go. Okay, and now this is the really exciting, intense gaming section. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and I'll do twenty-one just for safety. So we racked up all of that foil, and we're going to now go buy the cards that will be our deck for the rest of this act. Um, I should note that we got really lucky on drawing that bone heap. Um, normally, we'd have to do another fight, actually, before this to generate some foils to purchase the bone heap, but we uh, we lucked out and just pulled it. Um, I should also note that this is a ridiculously fast pace. I have into my estimate built in... Um, oh, hey, this might look familiar. I have it built in that... Um, I could have failed some of the RNG in the Act 1, because um, it happens sometimes, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and we are getting the absolute best RNG right now. Um, so, just a heads up about that. Okay, so we're going to purchase the Aurora Boris and a buttload of squirrels. And I'm going to empty my deck of that. Bone heap. So now we have skeletons, bone heap, and squirrels in our deck. So the way um, the way that Ouroboros works and why it's so important uh, for Act Two is that whenever it dies, uh, it returns back to your hand with a plus one to attack and a plus one to health. So basically, we're gonna be building up the Ouroboros to at least a four four. Yep. Um, so that we can more easily take care of the f upcoming fights and just pretty much chill through the, the the rest of Act 2. Yeah, basically. So you'll notice now it's at 3-3. Three, three. And the other thing is we put these specific cards in our deck with the Aurora Boris because um, the Aurora Boris is a rare card and everything else that we have in our deck is common. What that means is you're guaranteed to dr uh, draw one rare card. Um, we want to guarantee that that's the Ouroboros, right? Um, so we're always going to have common cards that we can play turn one to summon the Ouroboros. Um, we're always going to have the Ouroboros as well. There's still some RNG because I need another card in my hand that can do one damage for a bit here. Uh, so I did pick up the Clover to try to re which I can reroll my first hand with that. Um, so hopefully we don't have to do that, but it's, you know, it happens. Um, so yeah, another moment coming up after this fight of if there is any Save the Animal people in the Metroid Prime run, uh, please do not watch uh, what I do on this next screen. You can just pretend this, this screen doesn't happen. go and then we oh oh no queen i think i did it again okay good no okay <laughs> i screwed up the manipulation <laughs> in practice the other day but it worked it's out it's fine we i mean now we know how to fix that yeah <laughs> um so yeah we're taking these pictures to uh give to people because pictures for leshy become kind of uh real in a sense and i'm gonna be doing this fight and then the leshy fight and there's uh, really not much to them if i draw the right cards right now which i do so let's get maybe two more donations Love it. Uh, we're actually going to do one larger donation. We have $5 from Silver and Onyx. Just as Inscription is not quite, uh, quite it seems, the longer you play it, events like this are not just about the games and skills showcased by our lovely Fatals. Never forget that each and every one of you is brave and an inspiration to everyone watching. Thank you to all the runners, hosts, and everyone working behind the scenes for creating not just an event, but an experience with lasting memories and far-reaching impact. Thank you to everyone watching and hanging out in chat. The safe space that you've so carefully cultivated means the world to me and so many others. Seeing everyone come together with such unconditional love 
dedication and support has been wholesome and healing. Can't wait for, uh, wait for the next Fatal's event, less than three. Yeah. Very sweet. Thank you for all the donations. Um, I wouldn't be playing this if, if y'all didn't donate. So there's the, the first boss of Act 2 we're going to be going through, and um, this one is familiar to us. It's, it's Leshy. Um, but the other ones are going to be familiar as well, and we'll see that we have seen these characters before. But first, we have a cutscene skip here. For some reason, if you exit to the main menu and continue right here, it just skips, skips cutscene. So, perfect. Easy peasy. Um, and we're on to back where we started this. So this is the fight that we would have done to get the bone heap, but we drew it. Um, so we have to still have to do it though. We still have to do it, unfortunately, because it's part of um, getting to the boss, to to the boss of this specific area of Act Two. Yes. So that that's kind of the rule for every boss uh, in Act Two. You have to defeat their Servants, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's different for everyone. These aren't really servants. Yeah. These are just people who died and are in this graveyard, I guess. Which is dark. Companions. <laughs> dark, yeah. <laughs> this is a pretty dark game, uh, honestly. Um, it's really, it's like charming in its darkness, though. I feel like it's, it's, it's kind of funny at times and lighthearted, um, while also being fairly serious. Mm, honestly, I highly recommend it. I uh, I play a lot of games in my free time, and Inscription was one of those that I could not stop playing um, when I when I initially started it the first time. And it doesn't happen often, sadly nowadays. Um, so yeah. Yeah, no, it's really, it's a really, it's one that just that worms your way and it worms its way into your head and sticks with you. Um, that's why I don't. We're going to be talking about the plot, but we're not going to be talking about it too much because it's really best to experience it. Okay, Grimora, this was the stink bug. Um, ooh, we're, we're good. Yeah, we're fine. So we don't uh, win turn one here. We need to kill the Bonehound first to get around it. Um, and then we win here. And this is why we brought it to 4-4, not 5-5. Right this moment right here. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Where Luke is very mad that she kills his card. But you see, it got up to 5-5. Five, five. The thing is, uh, we have to do this at some point, have it die. And if we let it go to 6-6, six, six, we would be doing overkill damage. Overkill dam kill damage takes time because it gives us foils, right? Um, so now we will be winning on turn one. She gives us her cards. We're going to have another... Um, uh, dead battery here. So I'm gonna start walking and move my cursor up there. Something, if you um, do kind of uh, want to run this game, and I really highly recommend it, I'll talk about that later. Um, kind of cursor discipline is something that really stands out for people who are really fast. Um, putting your cursor where it needs to be before it, uh, you have to actually click on something um, saves a lot of time over the course of the run. So you can see I can just click instead of having to find that button. On to the other side. Um, so we're gonna have, oh shoot. One, two, three, one, one, two, three. There we go, I didn't, mem didn't memorize that one. So we're gonna have a few more fights and these are really straightforward. Um, there'll be something to talk about in the third one, but if you wanna do some donations for through these first couple fights, I would love to hear them. I would absolutely love to do that. Um, and as chat uh, has pointed out, that if we get that Path of Pain incentive, we'll also hit $150,000, which is not only past our uh, already personal best, it'll be even better. And all of that goes to the wonderful Malala Fund. Um, speaking of donations, though, we have a $500 donation from Marley. Shout out to, the, to shoving strange objects found in the woods into computers. <laughs> if you're cold, the floppy disk is cold, so be sure to bring it in and warm it up by plugging it into your computer. And as an IT professional, I can confirm, you have to make sure to keep those floppy disks warm, so thank you so much for that donation. Uh, thank you. An update as well, we are currently to $1,620 on the Path of Pain. So 
uh, I know I really want to see that uh, really apparently I, the hardest platformer section. I do need to. I do need to interrupt Absolutely. real quick. Uh, who do we got here, Queen? Who? Who? Stimulation. Stimulation. <laughs> the lonely wizard uh, who just wants stimulation. Uh, this is the single most important character in our run. Remember these intense eyes. Um, they'll be returning to us. So you've noticed how fast we're going through these these fights. Um, this one, in the second phase of it, we're going to have this awesome jam and. Um, we're going to have a little dancing wizard. So queue up uh, all your jam em uh, emotes in chat because um, you're not going to have long to use them. That's how fast we're going. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> and I can't. Need to hear more of the music. I can't. I got to go fast. There he is. There's our little lonely wizard dancing around. See you, bud. Something, something that you, we don't really get to see in the run um, is the fact that actually from Act 2 and onward, you can build so many different decks mm -hmm. because each of these bosses have their own kind of, um, uh, you know, mechanic to them with the cards that they can give you. So it, it may not look like it, but there's actually a lot of... Uh, the game gives you a lot of chances to just build the deck that you prefer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, the strat that we got going on right now is optimal. It's made for the speed run. That doesn't mean that you are forced to go with it. So, you know, deck building is part of the game. It's fun. Yeah, it really is. So the last person was Magnificus. That was the Stunted Wolf. Um, this is Poe. Uh, oh, shoot. I press button. Uh, who was the Stoat. Um, so Leshy imprisoned them in cards in that first act. They're free, and the game is kind of functioning as it normally does now. Um, but it won't be forever. And Poe is going to screw things up for us. Um, these these puzzles here, I hope I don't screw up uh, any of them. I, uh, I just have to say, if you played this game and you had difficulty solving these puzzles, me too, I seriously do not understand them. I, to this day, I don't know why the answers are what they are. I just know what they are. <laughs> um, I f feel that way that some of the puzzles in this game are quite difficult. Or maybe I can't do math, one of the two. Who can be sure? It's probably a little bit of both. Um, okay. So again, uh, Act Two, we're doing a lot of steamrolling. So this this whole act is probably gonna be a good good time for for a few donations. So right now as well, maybe uh, one more. Okay, we had twenty five dollars from Rio. Okay. Hops on the conveyor belt. Okay, this is the one. This is the one I screw up. Boom! Speed strats. Got it. <laughs> I always forget how to do this one. There we go. There we go, and we have one more fight in here. And this uh, character down here is kind of important. Um, each of these uh, scribes, as they're called, the bosses, are looking for something called the old data, and they know it's at the bottom of the ocean. So they all have a different method of searching for it. Um, Leshy is using the fisherman. Come on, there we go. Uh, Magnificus is has like an interdimensional squid. Uh, Poe here has the dredger. And what's the other person? Oh, Grimora, the well. Um, right here, I am not going to stick around long enough to see it, but the old data was found, and that's kind of important for the narrative going forward, even though, um, like I said, we're not going to get too, too into the narrative. I think, I think out of this all, the coolest one still remains Magnificus in any case, because, like, yeah. interdimensional squid. Yeah, know? right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, for sure. I like Magnificus. Uh, his cards are just so difficult to use, too. I feel like he gets the kind of short end of the stick. Um, we do Poe last because you'll notice here again, as we perfectly position our, our cards, that we do have to kill one of them, uh, bringing it up another point. But it doesn't matter anymore. That was the last fight of the act, so it doesn't um, impact our overkill damage or time. Okay, so that was the last... Well, actually, no. We got one more fight. One more fight in this act. 
Um, so we have to choose which scribe we're going to replace, question mark. I think that's the narrative. And we're going to pick Poe. Poe always will interrupt this, so picking him um, just kind of speeds up dialogue. And we think we have to fight him. You actually... You actually don't. Okay, flashing lights warning here for the next, uh, like, 10 seconds. Um, things are going to go haywire. This is very loud in my, <laughs> my headset. Uh, I, I think the, the noise gate handled it um, for y'all. But uh, all hell is breaking loose right now in Inscription the Video Game. And I'm going to get some water. Well, what goes uh, really well with hell breaking loose, but some donations. We have $15 from Lan. Thank you, GDQ, for all the entertainment, cozy nights, and goodwill. This Frost Fatales was amazing, and I'm sure you'll top it soon. Yeah, this has been a great... There's so many great runs, so many great uh, runs, commentary, this whole whole event. It was so much fun to, to watch. Um, act 3. Best Is this the best act? Uh, Queen? Yeah. We have an act. No. I know you're, I know you're an Act 3 fan. Um, no. Okay. I am a fan of the act that we never got. Oh, yeah, like yeah, Gamora. true. Yeah, well, I guess we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, our mechanics have changed pretty significantly here. Now we are using energy. Um, oh, shoot. I did that backwards. We're using energy to power our cards. So after every turn, we get one more max energy. And there we go. So after every turn, we get one more max energy. Um, and it fills up completely between. Just like that. So we're going to do some killing. Yes, yes. Um, did I screw this up? I don't think I did. So the empty vessel are uh, helpful to get uh, extra energy faster and summon cards that way. Yeah. So th the basics of the game are still the same pretty much, but um, the way that uh, some interactions are slightly different. Uh, even here you have the scales, even here you have consumable items, um, even here you have, you know, you need to sacrifice something in order to summon monsters. It's, it's just works a little bit differently. I'd yeah. Say. That was my first uh, major blunder of this run. Um, I essentially played things the wrong order uh, and lost, but that's fine. We were at a pretty ridiculous pace before this, um, and even with that mistake, um, we are still kind of schmoozing. This is um, another like relatively hard part of the game because um, at the beginning of uh, Act 3, pretty much like I would say halfway through Act 3, um, it's it's just basically playing the game normally. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any uh, OP card that, that we can use to our advantage. Uh, Mads here just has to try and find the best way to win as fast as possible. Yeah. The intended way, I'd say. Yeah, we have four what I kind of generally call boring fights <laughs> uh, here where you have to just play the game. Uh, we get a couple items. That one is important. It refills our energy. Um, but yeah, it's just finding the quickest path through um, as best you can in the moment. Um, it generally involves stalling for a bit to kind of work up to having more energy. Um, so generally the first at least like two turns, I'll kind of just be blocking damage. And uh, eventually I can then, yeah, let's do this. Kind of take things out. There we go. While you're doing that, can I do a quick uh, update on our incentive? Please, this is a perfect time Oh, fabulous. So we are currently 16% into our Path of Pain incentive. That is $1,645 out of a needed $10,000. If we can reach that $10,000, not only will we get a really cool uh, platforming showcase of the hardest platforming section of Hollow Knight, but we will also reach a new event high of $150,000, which is 
so cool. We have been doing so well this event, and I know Bingus would really want this. Yes. Whomsoever Bingus is. Um, so, let's see here. Yeah. We have this fight and one more. Um, so, why don't you do like three more donations for these two fights? They're honestly not too interesting. Okay. Um, but we'll have, we'll, it'll start ramping up uh, after that. Got it. So, we have a $125 from Classical Nocturne. Congrats on a great marathon, everyone. Thank you for all you do for a great cause. Less than three. We also have $50 from Sanjan saying bingus 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 and uh I think you understand the uh donation comment. And in a similar uh vein, we have $15 from Anonymous. Guess who's back? Back again. I'm so sorry I didn't get bingus into my uh deck. Honestly, I shouldn't have gotten airboat in. It was um not the most optimal play even though it worked out. So let's see here. So this fight can honestly be um, kind of a headache here um, on the bridge. There's two bridge fights that can be um, dangerous in this. So um, I'm going to put my sniper bot over here. And this is going to let me get rid of that double gunner nice and easy in this next round. Because it can shoot across there, and I'm going to use its bomb to get rid of both of those things. And now we have this one, one. And after this is where the interesting stuff comes in. So we're going to be reaching our second checkpoint here, and the power is going to go out. After he explains this stuff. There we are. The power is going to go out. And oh, I got to get to my act three notes. We need those here. And we it's can now stand up. Time. Yeah, it's finally time for... Um, let's see here. Bop, bop, bop. First, we got to get Miss Bomb. There she is. Hello. Beautiful. Um, and then we got to get our stimulation in. There we go. The Lonely Wizbot joins the deck. Seeking stimulation. stimulation. <laughs> this card is going to be our most important card. Uh, going forward. Um, he talks for a long time. That's fine, because he does a good job. Um, so we got to do some captures for Poe. Poe is a computer, after all. So cannot do these. Get this energy battery thing. Okay. And now we want, we're going to be powering up our um, Lonely Wizbot. We're gonna work back here, and I need to get an ability on it. Bifurcated strike, so that it basically doubles its damage. We have a twenty, about twenty percent chance to get this here, but we might have to do some like safe scumming and R and G advancement. Okay, so I didn't get to the first time. When I did this at fright, it took eight times. Um, let's not let's let's not. Manage. That was okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so this is gonna be second try. I, in my PB, I have it on fourth try. Um, so it's it's not a terrible chance of hitting it. It's twenty percent. So we'll see here. Oh no, I'm it's having I'm having flashbacks. Try. I'm having it, flashbacks. It's still first try. It's okay. It's okay. Everything okay. is fine. So we, we go can do this. back a screen to advance RNG. Stand up to save. Go back in. Come on, Poe. You got this. Give, give me give me the juice. Okay. There we go. Um. We don't get to this try. We might need some donations, but I believe I believe that this will be the one. Give me your energy, chat. There it is. Nice. Oh, nice, nice, nice. We can still give you some donations, anyways. Um, one second. I'm gonna do a couple things no first. Um, so we're gonna fly back and we're going to go into the next area, and I kind of just want to show um, how this works. Um, being twice as powerful. This is our first step in making our deck really strong. Um, so, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, but we're not really out of the woods, lol, with the trees yet. Um, these, uh, you do have to kind of finagle your way around these fights a little bit. Um, but what we can do to help with that 
is, um, yeah. The Lonely Wizbot, oh, come on, Hammer, has an ability called Clingy. Clingy, clingy, I can't say that ever. Uh, where you can move it around and it'll stick to a, um, uh, what's it called? Whatever card you lay down. Card? Yeah. Things get really dicey, though, if you allow um, some of these. Um, math. One, two, three. Do I need one more? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I think we're good. No, we're not good. That's fine. Because we can win. We can win right here. No, I did my math wrong. <laughs> I did my math wrong. Um, here we go. So we're going to make our way through this fight. Hopefully we're going to win it. Um, despite my blunders. It's just going to take a little while. but little Yeah, this is going to take a while. I think he'll probably forfeit soon. I can fill that time with donations. And... We win, and now please donate because we're going to do a couple fights and there'll be a, a difficult one in a second. So, yes. Love it. Please. Perfect. So, we have $50 from Bees. Happy birthday, Bunches, from the cuddliest pup on the other end of the couch. <laughs> we have $25 from Azela. Uh, oh, sorry, Eliza. My bad. Uh, being part of Fatales over the past few years has meant the world to me. I'm so glad to be a part of this amazing community and can't wait to see it continue to grow. Less than three, you, you all. We also have $25 from a mind half full. $25 from Kata saying, Airboat, return of Airboat. Mm -hmm. All right. Um... I'm definitely not taking the most direct paths through these fights, but um, it is okay because we are getting through. So this is our second one over here. We have one more and then the really dangerous fight happens. Um, and after that, we'll have our, our deck in a position where we should be really strong. Um, first, I'm looking for an EXE skeleton. I hope I get that. If I don't, it is fine. I'm gonna just take this little fella. We're going to get rid of the Double Gunner. Uh, the Double Gunner is really strong. It helps us in a lot of fights, but it has six energy costs, and that's just way too much uh, for this fight gear. So this is, yep, it looks like it's going to be our first instance to see the Miss Bomb thrown out. So what we're going to do, hopefully draw. Okay, perfect. Um, well, it's not perfect, but we have backup strats here. Um, this is what Miss Bomb does. Destroys the whole field. Uh, puts bombs in all the empty spots, and we can just use our hammer on it to um, get rid of it. And we're going to throw down that. There we go. Grab this. I'm feeling stimulated. <laughs> <laughs> go. And this will... Be the last turn right after this. I can throw down my sniper, right? Sniper bot. Oh no. Uh, there we go. So, part of the problem, if you don't win this right away, this starts happening, right? Um, I actually give me a bunch of donations because I have to redo this fight. Absolutely. We have $50 from Pacific CC. Team Bingus arise. We have $50 from Paticus. Not Bingus says Bingus is back. So let's bring Bingus back. I do love Faith though. This goes to both, though more goes towards Bingus. Uh, we have $50 from Joom. Long live airboat. 
<laughs> and I just want to remind everyone about our Path of Pain incentive. We do have until uh, the end of the Hollow Knight run to uh, meet this, but uh, that's actually not very much time. That's only about an hour from now. So um, we're going to have to work real hard. We're going to have to bring back all of that Bingus energy. Let it guide us to that 10 thousand dollars and you know what better way to end a marathon than really intense impressive platforming especially when there's grubs around i mean true um we're powering up the lonely whiz bot we're overclocking it we're putting another uh, damage on it and if this ever gets hit by anything because it only has one health it's gone forever so that's bad we can't let that happen um Good thing is that having six damage should let us basically win any fight. Um, turn one. So, yeah, get your donations in, y'all. I uh, was uh, on a ridiculously fast pace before I screwed up two of these fights here. So um, I've given you some ample time to catch up on getting those those uh, donation incentives met. Um, and we're going to be going on to our first boss of this section who is this Uberbot. And this one's interesting. This is the Archivist. Um, and as you'll see, the, the kind of gimmick of this one is there'll be some librarians that that um, they play. Um, and this seems dangerous, I know. Um, but we're going to take all that damage there. We're going to hopefully draw... Yep, there's our Lonely Wizbot. And whenever you kill one of them, you go into your actual computer's files. And I need to pick a large file to do the most damage possible. So we go down and we're gonna kill another one and we'll pick another file and this will do enough damage to move us on to the next phase. Um, the gimmick in this one, the second phase is you want something that's um, old, I think, right, Queen? It's old? Yep, that's yeah. correct. It doesn't matter though, we're not playing this card. Uh, we already have enough damage on the field from the Wizbot. Um, the other thing, uh, this is going to happen a lot in boss fights. They'll throw something down in front of your cards. Wizbot goes right around. Wizbot don't care. I'm going to be honest. When I did this fight casually, um, I went to try and find a very old file, and I found some stuff that I completely forgot <laughs> on my computer. So That's I funny. guess it also helps you clean up, you know? Right. In case you want to get rid of some stuff. Knowing yeah. that my files are going to be broadcast to thousands of people made me make sure that the <laughs> all of my things were labeled properly and stuff, too. Didn't want any miscommunications. Yeah, I wasn't exactly expecting this when, when I played it casually. So uh -huh. I was like, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> I hope I don't have anything weird over here. <laughs> right. While streaming, you know? I feel you on that. So, okay, we're going to go over to the next area. Um, I, I'm using a little bit different strats than I used to here, um, but this area, kind of the main thrust of it will be um, getting our deck smaller so that we're guaranteed to draw the Lonely Wizbot turn one. Um, so the first step in doing that is going to be on the next, um, next screen right here, where we're going to grind up one of our cards, the shield bot, for some money. So now there is um, one extra card in our deck um, that we won't draw on, on turn one. Um, we want to get that one last card out, so we guarantee the Wizbot. There it is. Thank you, Wizbot. Mm, the, the last time uh, that uh, you did this run in the marathon, um, the strat was slightly different for this, um, where you would basically try to get enough money uh, at the beginning of Act 3 mm -hmm. in order to then uh, overclock uh, the energy bot, if I'm not wrong. Yep. Um, and that way, overclocking, like just as the same as we did for the Wiz bot, would grant the energy bot one extra damage, but it would also make it a permadeath card, pretty much. So basically, you would get rid of it by intentionally getting it off the board. Uh, as soon as it was overclocked, but this is yes. this is definitely better, I'd say. Yeah, I, I like version. this strat a lot. Um, shout out to um, all the inscription runners. I've basically stolen ninety nine point nine percent of these things from other runners. Um, this is also New Games Plus, I should should say, um, which. 
the biggest difference, or <laughs> new game plus, what am I saying? It's so late. Um, no major glitches. Um, and the biggest difference in um, no major glitches and um, kind of unrestricted um, or glitch runs is the Act 3. Um, there's some really powerful glitches in this act, and if you want to see those, they're they're pretty bonkers to watch. Um, a really great runner, Berserker, is going to be running this next week in Indiethon, um, so you can check it out there. But a lot of stuff just happened. We gemified our cards. Um, so basically, um, our vessels will... Yeah, perfect. Um, when there's a vessel on the on the field, my gemified card, which I just did that to the only Wizbot, will cost one less energy. So um, if I use my item right now, I can play my Wizbot turn one. We're gonna try to change that so that we can just guarantee the Wizbot can always be thrown down turn one. Uh, here's a here's a situation of time loss um, that I'm I kind of gamble with this strat that um, we draw the lonely Wizbot. Um, so one extra turn it takes me to get through this fight. Um, but this is a reactor. They're pretty pretty straightforward. Just have to do a bunch of damage before um, time runs out. So maybe two donations real quick would be good. Yes, absolutely. So let's see if I've got my uh, simulation voice down. <laughs> we have $10 from Anonymous saying, Donation! Nice. We have $10 from Sanjan saying, Bingus, 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 grub. Bingus, 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 grub. Bingus, 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 grub. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Shout Thank out you to so Natara much. for reading all of these bingus yeah. all the time. <laughs> Listen, that's what I'm here for. I can only read as many binguses as you folks send in, though. I also accept grubs. I will attempt to make the cute grub noise. I'm not even sure I can, but send them in. Okay, this is... Um pretty obnoxious little scenario that we find ourselves in here um, that I have to use my uh, bombs because I didn't draw the Lonely Wizbot turn one so it's a big time loss to watch that if I would have drawn the Wizbot um, that's kind of the drawback to this new strat um, I don't guarantee the Wizbot in my hand in a few um, a few fights but it's fine all of that will be rectified right now by just getting rid of one more card We'll get rid of our sniper bot. Goodbye, buddy. You served us well. This happened again. This happened the other day. There we go. It just wouldn't go. Don't know why it does that. Um, but you'll see here in these next two fights that our good friend who just loves stimulation will be right here in our card. Stimulation. Yes, we know, bud. We get it. There we go. And then um, the next fight is going to be straightforward. So if you can squeeze one more in, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. We have $50 from Pyro Hero Matt. I suppose Bingus can be back as a treat. Mm -hmm. I, f I feel like I, I wasn't... At, um, I didn't watch the beginning of the Pokemon Stadium or Coliseum run. Uh, and Bingus was a meme by the time I got there, so I'm just kind of rolling with like, yeah, Bingus, I get it. I, I get the funny joke. Uh, I've been advised, because I had to ask myself, that uh -huh. it was a meme before the Coliseum run. Ah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Boss time. Yeah, I am born. Um, so we make up rules for this boss. Uh, Queen, you want to talk about the rules? Well, uh, the bot gives you um, several different options that you can pick. In this case, we picked uh, that on turn start, um, uh, one of the cards... Uh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they get nano armor, yeah. but it doesn't matter. Yeah, and the second time on turn start, you lose one life uh, for the second round, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to win anyway super fast. Thanks yep, to our just like that. bot. I'm sorry, it's late. I'm, I'm like... <laughs> I know, it's okay. I won't put <laughs> you on the spot again. Thread. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just, you know, you know, if we gotta talk about how beautiful Grimora is, for example, or okay. how that's fascinating... <laughs> that's true, that's true. I, uh, um, everyone should, um, I guess, I don't know if congratulates the word, but um, be in awe that means even here this this early hour um 
Okay, we did something to our um, vessels. They not only reduce the cost of the Wizbot being played, they also give us one more energy whenever we play them, which means we're we're in go mode. Um, we can always play Wizbot turn one, no matter what. Um, so this is really what we're building up to. It's kind of if um, Act Two has like a ton of setup right at the at the top that really kind of gets your um, that you kind of just get your get your deck together um, very quickly. Um, this is a much slower development of your deck, um, but once you get there, it's just as powerful as that Aurora strat, um, and we can always win turn one, um, which is great. Um, so this is also. Um, you may have kind of noticed that these areas that we're going to kind of mirror the Act 2 kind of layout, especially this one um, with all the trees and the forests and the, the kind of enemies are now um, animal-based a lot of the times. So, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have picked that card. It's going to have animation every time. Um, but this is this is kind of Leshy's area. Um, we've already cleared out Magnificus's and Grimoire's, right? Yeah. Um, so we're going to be leaving kind of the Poe area for last. But we're already to the Leshy boss, and it is the photographer fight, which is, you know, makes sense. Leshy is, um, how he makes his card is cards, how he inscribes his cards, I should say, is through his um, camera, his special film in his camera. And this fight has a mechanic about where you can take a picture of the board, and then you can... Um, I guess return it to that state um, later. We're not even going to take a picture. We don't care. We already have it set up exactly how we want it. Um, we're just going to draw a card and win. I think to an extent it's a good thing that we don't get to see uh, these little gimmicks because this way people can experience them firsthand. True. We're going to play the game. Yeah, you probably won't have this kind of steamrolling deck built up. Um, I, I guarantee there'll be more, a more of a challenge. Um, so Poe tells us about... I always do that. About how cool this area is. It is his. Um, and we're going to go around the circle here, um, turning on these uh, satellite dishes, I guess. So while we are doing that, again, we could get maybe, maybe three donations in would be good. Absolutely. We're making really good progress on that path of pain. We're now at $1,950. And uh, we got there from help uh, with a $100 donation from Calamity Nolan. We also have $25 from Airboat saying, Airboat? Airboat! <laughs> Airboat yeah. put in the word for us. Oh, and yeah. we're hoping Airboat's going to continue. Okay, um, we... Oh, can I read yeah, one ahead. more? No, go ahead. Go Excellent. Yep. We have $25 from Divided by Zero. So many great prizes. So many great games. So many great runners. But there's only one Bingus. Mm. We also have $50 from Les Lotus. Thank you to everyone who worked tirelessly to make this an amazing week for tra for uh, speed running and for the Malala uh, for the Malala Fund. With every marathon, I'm so glad to be part of this um, incredible community. Trans rights less than three. Hell yes. Um, all right. This will be the final boss. We have this fight here. And as you've kind of seen, these uh, these fights with these strats are hardly fights at all. So we're going to have this one and one more reactor. Um, I think this is a really cool um, boss fight coming up. It's, it's my favorite one. Um, but really, I think Poe's section uh, has a lot of creative stuff in it. I think people tend to not like it very much. Um, just because it's it's not as atmospheric and as cool as how Leshy set up the first act. Um, but from like a gameplay standpoint, I, I do find this quite cool. With that. At least the bosses are, are really neat. Um, but yeah, Leshy, Leshy is the ultimate GM, so makes sense. go save from the explosion and then we're on to the last boss of this section golly and golly connects golly. to the internet <laughs> we're about so. to explore the web yay 
Look at that! A mole. Adorable. So, this is a really interesting fight. As you will see here, we gotta take out the mole first. Um, he's gonna tap into the internet again and take some friends from Steam and toss them down. Um, and after we clear this damage, he's gonna wipe the field. So bye, Lonely Wizbot. We're gonna use one new card. This is the only other card we're gonna use. We're gonna make it. Um, whoops, there we go. Normally this is given to someone else, this Big Fat 2000. Confirm. But I have blocked like the ability for inscription to connect to the internet at all. Um, so it, co it comes back to us. And we toss down the Big Fat 2000 and we win. And now I have to do remember to do a skip here. Okay. So wait until the light fills up. There we go. We go to the start screen, continue, and we've skipped a whole bunch. We're, we're, we come back up here. Um, we would have gone and met all three of the other scribes. They're in the basement, um, but we don't have to do that. And Poe's grand plan was revealed. Oh my gosh. He knows knows that Luke's there. He's trying to connect to the internet and upload like, the old data in this game and like take over and spread through the web. And he's, he's about to do it. Uploading, uploading, gets to a tasteful 68%, and there's Leshy. <laughs> but not just Leshy, we got two other friends here. We got Magnificus and Grimora. So Magnificus wants us to start the game over. Grimora says, oh, what do we got here? The game files. Delete. No, not my floppy disk. And, and as we fall into eternity here, uh, why don't you give us one more donation? Absolutely. We have $25 from Bradley Saber 22 for Hollow Bingus, Path of Bingus. Go fast and stay silly, everyone. Hashtag trans rights less than three. Hell yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Hollow Knight run after this, so keep donating for that. All right, and I'm gonna be quiet for a second because I want you to hear this one piano note. I always say this, I know it's not the right note, but just a lone piano note always reminds me of Welcome to the Black Parade. So I always am reminded of it that there. Um, and who do we have here in the darkness? But Grimora. We got a whole other section. Grimora section. I wish. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. Um, no. Look at her. Look at how beautiful this is. Yeah, she's so cool. She is definitely the coolest scribe. Um, but she is the leading the files. She's the scribe of death. So, um... She's all about finality and things ending. So if we just lose to her, we end this section right now. We shake her hand, GG. There's a really cool Easter egg if you like get to what would be the boss fight here. Um, that I guess I won't spoil it all for anyone, but it's, it's, it's really fun. Um, what happens with her boss fight? But we beat uh, Ramora. And then we are on to the saddest section of the run, uh, the Leshy section. This part is, in my mind, absolutely devastating, this poor guy. Um, we don't get to really see it because we don't really talk about the narrative too much here, but Leshy is absolutely not the villain of this, this story as we might have thought while we were in the cabin earlier, right? Um, he was, you know, imprisoning us and killing us is, is what we thought, but no, he was just trying to give us a really compelling game to play. Um, and he absolutely did that, right? Like, I think it's kind of agreed upon that the first act is the most engaging and, and cool and fun and atmospheric. Um, and how much he puts into his characters with the masks and, and stuff and, and the music. So um, his goal in all of this is not world domination like Poe. It's just to have a good game, have fun. So sorry to see you go, buddy. But uh, all I'll be doing is passing turns here. So another great donation time. 
Fabulous, and we have a bunch of donations. We have $50 from Pittman Lion House 08071. It says, Thank you, Frame Fatales, for another frostastic event. We're so grateful for everyone, both on screen and off, that make these events possible. Congratulations on the new PB. Every dollar is going to a wonderful cause. Looking forward to Flame Fatales 2023, less than three. We also have $75 from Zokubun saying, Bingus is back. <laughs> and just want to bring everyone up to date on our incentive. That is for the Hollow Knight Path of Pain. It is a really intense apparently the hardest platforming section of the game and our runner will do that for us but we have to meet this incentive currently we are at uh well, we just got an update. We're currently at $2,000, uh, $2,050 uh, out of a needed 10,000. So we are officially a fifth of the way through. We can definitely push this. Get your donations in. Uh, tell me about your favorite scribe or the favorite card in this or how much you love grubs, which are in the Hollow Knight run. I'm going to say... Uh, there's about seven to eight minutes left in this run as well. Um, I don't know what I'm at on my I'm on the clock, but um, but we have ourselves the magnific magnificent section. Drops down 400, 400. We got a dual disc. Um, let's do this. And let's let's do this. You get all amped up. It has this awesome music. You're apart from each other, and you'll notice I'm not pressing any buttons or doing anything. Uh, really, unfortunately, this very cool section, which I guess I can just do some stuff um, just to see um, what things kind of look like, um, very much inspired by Yu-Gi-Oh, is actually kind of an auto, well, it's it's an auto-scroller. It's, it's a cutscene, essentially. Um, it's six minutes, and it's tied to this audio file. Um, this will end when the audio file ends. So we have a long cutscene here, and... I was I was thinking about uh, things to Yu-Gi-Oh related things to do. Uh, I asked a, a good friend of mine for some, some trivia, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that. But I do want to uh, show my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card that was given to me by uh, my friend Just Bryce TV. Uh, follow them for the best Yu-Gi-Oh content on the web. The uh, no idea if this comes through. I don't have my stream up, but the Trans Cicada. Um, so. It's beautiful, it's cool, I have it with me on my desk at all times. Um, yeah, I know uh, you're a card card game player, um, Queen, I'm not. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I, I have a problem with card games. <laughs> it's uh, it's very hard for me to stop playing them, to be honest. Uh, I feel you. Yeah. You know, next time that we do this, instead of Yu-Gi-Oh! Facts, I, I got an idea. Why don't I just yep. sing the Italian intro of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> because I I never knew that, but, um, you know, several years after living outside of Italy, I found out that actually not all anime intros in every country have, like, proper lyrics and everything. Like, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, American one, I think it has basically no lyrics. Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> That's all I remember. <laughs> it's like it's just like it's time to do, 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 do. yeah. <laughs> so it does, but you know, in in Italy, it's like a a whole song. So oh, wow. and I still remember it because it's like so embedded in my brain, basically. But yeah, <laughs> I just realized, you know, yeah, it's been a very awkward situation for me. But you know, I would have. <laughs> For, well, I won't, for, I won't put you on the spot and tell everyone to donate for that, but... Um. <laughs> no, please, put everyone on the spot and ask them to donate for that. Yeah. Speaking um, of donations, yeah, can ahead. I get a few more in here? Yes, get like three, four, get a bunch. That would be great. So we have $50 from Panic Kid, Team Bingus. We have $25 from Otako. Uh, let's push that charity PV higher. And if we can meet this incentive for the Path of Pain, we will reach $150,000, which is such a great number and will be an amazing event PB. So definitely help us out with that, folks. Uh, we have $100 from Ricky K. Uh, we also have $50 from uh, BD Jeffy P saying, bonus prizes while donating to a great cause? Sign me up. 
And that is a reminder that any donation you make during from now until the end, we have a whole bunch of prizes. Um, usually we have prizes for a minimum of ten dollars we have fifteen dollar prizes we have an adorable grub keychain for ten dollars we'll enter you into that plus never forget about our 125 dollars cumulative donation throughout the event entering you in for a playstation 5 and nintendo switch and games so lots still to donate towards not just that incentive yeah, that's great. Keep the incentives coming in. I'll just note as I'm trying to lose as much health here as possible, the world is disintegrating around us. Our uh, dual disc is barely there. These cards are glitching out. Um, so this is really shaping up to be the, the end of inscription um, All the, as the files continue to, to be deleted. So this also signals that we're getting closer to the end of the song, <laughs> um, this kind of auto-scroller. Um, um, I think we've gotten all the dialogue from Magnificus already. Uh, Ooh, and can if, we and, squeeze yeah. in another donation then? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think you probably have one more. Okay, great. We have $125 from Maddie Inc. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everyone's generosity. Like I said at the top, um, it is an honor to, to be playing this and I, uh, in front of y'all. And... Um, feel also very honored that y'all uh, donated to to see it. So I really appreciate it on a personal level and also um, for all the good that uh, Fatales has been doing. Um, okay, things are really winding down here. So he's going to start glitching out in a few moments. If anyone can find uh, a way around this cutscene, uh, I would be so appreciative. <laughs> um, that would be really great. Um, so if anyone wants to get on that task. Um, but Magnificus wants to come shake our hand, and that will signal the end of this section as he slowly crawls to us. Come on, bud. Can we squeak in another donation while the crawling time, occurs? Time is going to be coming up in just a few moments, actually. So um, we're going to talk to this lady, the woodcarver. We never really met her. Cycle the, the screens, and time will be coming up right now. Uh, there we go. And I am going to stop that from playing. Uh, we don't want to spoil, spoil the ending. Um, yeah, there we go. That was Inscription. Um, thank you so much uh, for having me, for donating to see the run. Um, before I do any sign-off stuff, Queen, do you have do you have any anything to throw out? Yeah, I'd just like to say that you know, if the developers want to do a DLC with the Grimora and Magnificus <laughs> sections, I'll pay money for it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would. <laughs> right, I agree. So you know, um, I'm just throwing it out there. Just uh, <laughs> no, but um, besides that, I would like to thank you, Mats, for having me here today. Yeah. Um, I know it's kind of like very early or very late for me, I guess. Um, so I'm a bit out of it, but I had a lot of fun uh, doing this with you the first time, and I had a lot of fun doing this with you again. Yeah, um, I so really yeah, thank appreciate you. For you. That. And thank you, everyone yeah. that donated, and all the people in chat. Uh, Y'all are wonderful. Uh, keep up the good work. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for for being on, especially at this late hour. Um, I also wanted to just you know throw out um, echo, I guess, things that have been said all marathon by many different people, um, probably more eloquently than I'm going to do it right now. Um, a about Fatales. Um, it's a great space uh, for. Um, girls and women who want to be gaming, um, also queer and trans women, um, extremely uh, open and accepting place. Uh, if you want to find a find a place to you know learn about speedrunning, this is one of the most supportive and open places you can do do that. Um, and I also want to say uh, to any other speedrunners out there, um, remember that uh, it's not. Um, um, Excuse me, I lost my words. Uh, I really want to just say trans rights, I guess. Um, it's not enough to just tacitly accept um, the queer and trans people in your communities and the women. Um, vocally support them um, like we find in these spaces here. Um, 
And that's all. I really appreciate being on. I really appreciate uh, y'all donating. And I'm looking forward to the Hollow Knight run. So that's all I got. Well, thank you so much to Meds and to Queen and all the hard work you're doing here. Um, we are going to be getting ready and getting set up for our next run. But in the meantime, we have a $30 donation from Uni. And it says, this donation goes towards skipping the grub in Beast Den in Hollow Knight. Now, I think Uni might just be trying to start fights because I think we're pretty pro-grub here. So, uh, folks, if you want to make sure that we see that one grub in this upcoming Hollow Knight run, best get our donations in. And with that, we are going to go to a word from our sponsors. Welcome back, everybody. We are Frost Fatales, and we are still here and working, getting ready for our final run of Hollow Knight. We still have incentives that we are working towards, and I have total and utter faith that everyone will help us meet those. Uh, helping with that, we have a $250 donation from Anonymous. We have a $25 donation from Anonymous saying less than three. We have a $25 donation from uh, Ampilux. Everyone is being so helpful. Uh, we also have a 
$50 donation from Grub Number 21, saying, insert Grub Noises here. Well, let's see if we can do that with actual Grub Noises. I don't think that was a grub noise, but we gave it our best shot. So if we want those grubs, you should donate and let us know. But in the meantime, we are going to go and have a little word from our sponsors. Congratulations, you won! Hello and welcome back! So we have a $25 donation from Zombo. Thank you so much. And with that, we are going to go to a video about Malala Fund. نحن جايين على الطريق كان طريق كثير صعب جبنا معنا بس قليل كثير من الاغراض وكبينا نص الشات فالشيء الوحيد اللي جبته معي هو هذا الدبدوب this is a video series in which girls from countries around the world are sharing their stories and telling what matters to them. Hi everyone. Ana ismi Hadir. Hi friend, mera naam Akancha. This is Roll Call. Marhaba, ana ismi Hadir. عندي ثلاث اخوات انا اكبر وحده فيهم هذول مرحبا مرحبا يلا اشترك بي هاي هاي وين محلة هاي محلة هون ايه انا بالوقت الفاضي عندي بحب اني العب مع اخوي بهدول الكروت بالاوقات العادية بنلعب فيه انا واخوي سوا وبنتسلى فيها انا ما عشت بحلب عشت باللادقية رحنا على حلب لما رحنا على حلب كان بلشت بأزمة فأنا كنت أخاف كتير كتير من صوت الضرب ومن صوت القصف كنت مثلا أروح أتخبى في البراد أروح أتخبى في حي الله محل بحيث أني ما بخاف من الصوت إنه كنا كل ما نطلع من المدرسة نروح بخوف على البيت نخاف توعى قنبلة أو شيء فمرة من الأيام رفقاتي قال لح إنه يطلعوا من المدرسة بكير قلت لهم لا لا تطلعوا إنه بكير أخذوا إذن وراحوا على المد... على البيت بعد ما طلعوا تقريبا بدايقتين نزلت قذيفة قدام المدرسة ما حد ما طلعوا هنن نحن رجعنا لبرا حتى نشوف شو في فمات رفقاتي ومات بعض الأساتذة وماتوا بعض رفقاتي هاي الشيء الواحد ما بنساه هذا البيت كثير كثير بحبه لانه في رفقات كثير بالمدرسه هلا احنا طلعنا من المدرسه ورايحين على البيت اول شيء بنحب نروح على الحديقه نحن بعد المدرسه هاي الحديقه كلياتها بنجيب اكل وبناكل بنحل وظايفنا اذا بدنا بعد ما نرجع من المدرسه اول مره جينا على الحديقه اول ما سكننا هون في انقره جينا على الحديقه انا كل ما تبركى هذا المقعد عم بدرس اجت هديل وما كنت تدرس معي بعدها تعرفنا على بعض انا بحب هاي الحديقه لانه في كثير اولاد ما بسوريا الاولاد كلهم ما بطلوا يلعبوا بالحدائق لانه كله في قصف فهون بفرح لما بشوف اولاد عم يلعبوا بالحديقه ورجعوا يلعبوا وينبسطوا فأنا فرحت لأنه رح أدخل عليه لأنه كنت أول ما رجعت تركيا قلت إنه أول شيء بتعلم إنه كمان بتعلم تركي 
وملة بالبيت لحاله كنت كتير كتير أمل بالبيت وكان ما عندي حدا يسليني فقلت بتسلى وتعرف عرف آه. رفقات وكان في عنا رفقات اتراك رفقات عراقيين رفقات سوريين ورفقات من كل البلاد فتعرفت وتعلمت تركي زيادة I hope that these stories would have inspired you and that you would share it with your friends as well and please do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Hello and welcome back everybody. We are back with Frost Fatales and we are going to read some donations as we are still working towards that path of pain incentive. We have $125 from Final Fa uh, from FFX Faith. Thank you to everyone who has done so much to bring this amazing event to the people of the world. This donation is for the Path of Pain Hollow Knight Run, and more importantly, to support all women, cis and trans, in the world. Trans rights are human rights. We have $50 from Anonymous. We also have $100 from Mike saying trans rights. We have $200 from Anonymous. Thank you so much. And just to talk a little again about that incentive we're working towards, we are trying to get $10,000 in order to meet the Path of Pain incentive for our last game, Hollow Knight. For folks who are really sad that the event is ending, myself included, Meeting this incentive will help give us a little bit more extra time to squeak in a bit more out of Frost Fatal. So let's really work towards meeting that. It is a uh, Hollow Knight's most challenging platforming gauntlet. So we definitely want to see that. Currently, we're at $3,695 out of a required $10,000. Okay, so we have $25 from Sir Broseph. We have $500 from S underscore Herzog. Good luck, go fast. We have $50 from Lord Skeletor CPR. Thank you for the week of great gaming for a great cause. Now, I also need some help from you, chat. We have the Hollow Knight run coming up. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the adorable grubs which are in that game. Now, I understand we have to skip most of them. This is a speed run. However, there is one grub that we are going to have to pass no matter what. And our runner is thinking about skipping that grub. So get your donations in and uh, let's just cheer on the runner and uh, let her know just how much we want her to pick up that grub. So help us out, chat, and put your donation and make sure to attach it to that incentive so we can kind of work towards two goals at once. Our official incentive and our unofficial incentive filled with cute, adorable grub. We also have $50 from Tofu Tsunami. Thank you so much. We have $50 from Emily. I have loved watching all these amazing femmes kick butt and play games. Thanks for a great week. We have $75 from Rail Tracer. Less than three to all runners, hosts, viewers. Thank you everyone for a greater event. $50 from Anonymous. Let's make, uh, make these last couple of incentives. Okay, perfect. We also have $100 from Belinda Bird. With that, though, I think I hear rumors in the distance that we might be ready for some more prizes. Take it away, team. Welcome back to Frost Fatals 2023. For the last time, my name is Sent, and I'm joined by two of my favorite people to be on a couch with. We've got Frozen Flygon and Corva May. How are you two doing? You know, it, it does get emotional when you start looking on the break screen it's, and it's you the see the finale on the schedule. Um, but, 
it's been, you know, it's been fantastic being here with the two of you, you know, getting us through the week. Oh, thank you, Gordon. It just comes up so fast. It really does. <laughs> yeah, no, like like Tuesday. I'll tell you, everyone at the studio is just like, how is it only Tuesday? I know. Oh, oh, oh dear God, how is it only, how do we make it through a week? And then suddenly it's, it's Saturday night and we are preparing for the final run wow. of the marathon in Hollow Night. But we still have so many amazing prizes that you all can donate for. We still have an amazing run in that Hollow Knight run coming up. You don't want to go anywhere for sure. Uh, But before we started talking about the prizes, I kind of wanted to talk about some of the specifics from this event. We've actually got some some cool numbers here to read off uh, because we've already raised over $144,000 for Malala Wow. And that comes from 31 distinct countries. Okay. Primarily the United States, but still 31 distinct countries donated to the event. Thank you all so much for that. Uh, over 300 donations of exactly $5. So those $5 <laughs> trains were definitely getting somewhere. And I think you all might have liked the prizes because we had about 1,300 donations of $25. Oh my uh, gosh, that's so amazing. People definitely <laughs> got in those $25 donations. Thank you all for doing so. And if you haven't gotten in a $50 donation this evening, you absolutely should because we have a ton of super cool prizes to talk about. And May, uh, I've, I've got one for you that I think might be relevant. All right. We have at least 32 donations that included the word bingus. Yes. Bingus is Bingus still is back, back baby. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Amazing. Thank you so much for getting those stats for us. It's, you know, every single person who's been watching and donating, you're making a difference in this event. And that's, it's, that's a, you know, all the people who donated the prizes we've been talking about all week. It's, it takes so many people to make this broadcast happen. All the people at the studio, all the people in the Discord, all the members of GDQ staff who have helped us along the way. And we, we really can't thank everyone and, enough. And everybody watching. And everybody watching. If you, sure, if, you all, yeah. if you all weren't watching, we wouldn't be able to be here to be watched. So. That's true. Good point. There you go. But with that in mind, we still do have prizes because yes. if you donate before the end of the finale, you're going to be eligible to win all of the amazing prizes that we have today. Again, if you haven't gotten at least a $50 singular donation in today, you absolutely should. If you haven't gotten in $125 total throughout the marathon, you should first off, because that's going to get you entered into our grand prize, which is, of course, oh. a PlayStation 5. You didn't have to pick it up again. It's so a heavy. Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and six different Switch games that we all saw runs of in the marathon get you two new current generation consoles and a whole host of games that you can try out speedrunning or just enjoy casually. Now... With those donations, you're also going to get yourself entered into some amazing prizes, like this beautiful Claire pin from A Short Hike sent to us by Alley Cat. Uh, you know, it's absolutely lovely. You know, you're just, just flying along right there. I love the translucent, like, air effect behind the wings. That's that's super cool. Big fan of it. $10 minimum donation. But we're not going to tell you the minimum donation amount. It'll be on screen. Just remember, $50. If you haven't already today, it's going to get you entered into everything we're going to talk about and more. What you got there, Court? Yeah, but yeah that, we also have another prize that I love. $10 oh, minimum donation. Grub. 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 I'm not, I'm not going to say it. Grub. Grub. Um, uh, this, this one's for, you know, our, our host, Natara, coming up for this run is obsessed with grubs. And you could get your own sent it to us by Delta Crafts. Just $10 for your own little grub. And if you haven't played Hollow Knight, uh, A, you should check out the run that's about to come up. Yes. It's really good. And B, you can pretend it's Caterpie. That's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. You want to show off the other Hollow Knight prize All we right, got? this one's what harder. What Pokemon's this? Um, Cubone. Okay, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Cubone. Yeah, that's that's that fantastic. Sense. So uh, who sent this uh, Cubone into So uh, I believe this is the vessel from Hollow Knight, and it was sent to us by uh, Vichon. Thank you very much for sending this in. It's a $15 minimum donation. And uh, unlike in the game, spoiler alert, uh, we only have one. We only have one. We only have one. Ah. It's but one. it's an amazing one. It's one of a kind even. And uh, you're going to want to... You're going to want to get this little keepsake of the amazing run that Somni's going to do for us right after this. Yeah, make sure not to break it. That's a really annoying boss fight. And, I mean, come on. It looks beautiful as is. It really does. We've got so many amazing prizes here. Speaking of some Hollow Knight stuff. Yeah, I might as well just keep the Hollow Knight going. We have a lovely set of four different Hollow Knight posters depicting 
different moments from the game. They are all absolutely fantastic. They all have this lovely nope. holographic shimmer effect on them as we make sure we're holding them around. <laughs> We all learn from each other, and you know, I think we we also sometimes just copy each other. Look, it's beautiful. I, I, look I'm, I'm learning from the professionals here. I'm just gonna say, everyone at home, it's not as easy. As it's, it's really hard. It's, it's really, really hard. Not. But what is evident is that these posters are all fantastic yes. in their composition. They capture the spirit and the mood of Hollow Knight perfectly. That's of Goop. You've done an amazing job, and thank you so much for sending us this lovely poster collection. Could be yours, $20 minimum donation. And also for a $20 minimum donation, we have uh, some lovely bath bombs that I know you two like to talk about. Every I, time I pick these up, my hands become covered in glitter. Yeah, they really do. They're very Yeah, I love it. They're very shiny. You know, we, you will have to unwrap it, but at the same time, it's like you got, you know, the Ruby, we got the Pokeball, we got the two different hearts from, you know, games involving hearts. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> where would the hearts be? Do you know? The Kingdom of Hearts, of course. Okay, how about this one? I got that one wrong earlier. Sent. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a Legend of Zelda heart, or See, really, really, I think you called it an Undertale heart. I it's, did. It's a beautiful um, generic heart. It's a Castlevania heart. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, yeah. you know what? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's ammo. You get one mm -hmm. use of it exactly. for that bomb. Exactly. That's a good point. That's go. a good point. And, and just as a reminder, the Pokeball and I believe the Rupee yeah. are uh, bath bombs that actually have little toys inside them after you've used them, which is just super cool. Um, and it also comes with a Super Mario theme. Star Bath Bomb, unfortunately, not able to show that one off for you right now, but they're all amazing. They all come together as a single set, $20 minimum donation. Thank you so much to Little Arrow Soaps for sending them out to us. My hands smell so nice now. That's amazing. <laughs> well, you can also, you can use those hands to hold these Tetris pieces. Perfect. So another prize that has a bunch of components to it. I love when people send out, you know, a whole set. So we've got all these little, all these Tetris pieces, all the different colors. All the Tetrominoes in all of their colors. Uh, Can I steal that one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Take the L. Wait, is that the L? No, it's Waluigi. <laughs> oh, I see. Court already took the L. No. Oh, wow. Wow. You're just, you're just going to do that to court live on camera? You're giving her the L. <laughs> No, look, she already took it. Look, I know you normally don't want to take home the L, but in this case, you absolutely should. Ten dollar minimum oh donation. God. Beautiful set of perlers of you know the tetrominoes. But guess what? They're also magnets. You can stick them on your fridge. You can stick them on. I was about to say stick them on your PC. Please don't. That's a terrible. <laughs> then your PC idea. will take the L. <laughs> Don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do That's that. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> hey, but... lessons, lessons from our tech lead. You know, really great job. I can officially state that you should not put magnets on your computer. That is a guarantee. We're, we're learning a lot in this prize <laughs> segment. Thank you so much, Cat and Dirty Housewife, for these and for all of the amazing parlors you've sent out to us over the event. We'll, we'll, we'll just keep on the learning train here. You know, you're going to learn all of, you know, Print Star. So yeah. you got a wooden treasure map here. And, we, you know, we saw that Super Metroid run that was so much fun. And I love that this is on, like, actual wood with the pins, you know, showing you where all those places in, in Print Star to go. Yeah, no, it's it's super cute. I, I love that it's kind of functional. It comes in this beautiful frame that is ready to hang. And the detail I don't think we've pointed out that I really like is you can see, like, a silhouetted crate. <sighs> Yeah. And a, uh, a silhouetted mother brain there on, on like the edges of the map. So it's even got some really nice just artwork for the, the aesthetic's sake. That's super cool. Minturn Makers always does such unique and interesting and cool woodcraft. Uh, I love their work. This is no exception. It's a beautiful one-of-a-kind piece. $25 minimum donation. Make sure to get your donations in. I completely agree. And, you know, there's a few prizes that we don't have available here in the studio, but they're still, you know, fantastic. You can see pictures of them at the website. And, you know, they're going to show up on our screen here. We've got the Pirate Planet poster from Phoebe J, $15 minimum donation. I The style of this prize is so unique. I love what people come up with in terms of, you know, we have our video game themed stuff, but into things that people would love to have, you know, to donate for. Yeah, no, that we have a ton of really great prizes that unfortunately couldn't be here to show off in person. Uh, we also have some lovely iron-on patches sent to us by Wolf and Wings. You get like a full set of patches featuring some Sonic characters, uh, the goose from Untitled Goose Game, the Heartless and Nobody symbols, Samus's logo, as well as a Metroid from the Metroid series. You get a whole host of absolutely beautiful patches that are Always amazing quality from our friend Wolf and Wings. Thank you so much for sending those yeah, out to us. Yeah, thank you.
Want to show us another? Well, we do have one more prize that we weren't able to get in the studio. We should probably talk about that one first. There's the Death Door Forest Spirit oh, Crochet yeah. as well. That's a good one. Uh, I love the, the Death Door. I thought it was super, super cute. It has nothing to do with the fact that it has a bird, and so does my username being referenced to those. Completely unbiased. Um, and all the everything in that game is honestly super adorable. Um, every time you meet a new character, it's like, look at this cute little guy. Yeah. And that cute little guy, that could be at your home. Uh, thanks to this uh, Forest Spirit Crochet sent to us well, soon to be sent to us by Mukarin, and it's a $20 minimum donation. And you can check out that and all of the other prizes that we didn't have in the studio at the website at gamesdonequick.com slash prizes. You absolutely can, May. Thank you so much for bringing that up. But we still have more prizes to talk about. We have even more cool stuff because our friends over at Sega have sent us a lovely awesome. collection of cool Sega things. First off, you get yourself a collector's <gasps> edition of Shin Megami Tensei V awesome. along with this adorable Nahobino uh, plush right here. Basically the protagonist of the game, a, a human fused with the demon. Spoiler alert for the first like five minutes of SMT5. I was really wondering why her eyes look like that. She looks like she's... This explains a lot. She looks like she did not have a great day. You know, I think I did, any, though, so. I did, I did. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, just general SMT advice. I think if you find yourself in an SMT game, you're not having okay. a good day. Things have already just gone completely downhill. But what you should find yourself in is in this Switch copy of Sega Genesis Classic Collection because that's also coming with the prize pack. Another wonderful Switch game you could be playing on your new Switch. As well as some lovely pins here. You get Joker's Mask from Persona 5 along with a collection of the Monkey Ball friends from Super Monkey Ball that come in their own little gachapon Monkey Ball capsules. Like, those are There's adorable. There's so much stuff in this. That's awesome that Sega sent all of, all of this out to us and, and it's one prize. And, and I'm not even done because I, I haven't know. even mentioned the Lost Judgment Steelbook case and digital game code as well as the oh Lost my goodness. Judgment pins. Oh, like, oh, you just can't get it right. There's so much cool stuff in this prize <laughs> pack. Make sure to get in a $25 minimum donation for it if you haven't already. But while you're getting in that $25, instead, consider getting in a $50 minimum donation because our next prize is so good, I can't portray it, display it, whatever you want to say it, sitting down. I got to stand up and take it off this beautiful dress form we have over here to show it to you because we have a lovely hand-embroidered oh jacket goodness. sent to us by the Gilded Lion. This thing is incredible. Again, these look like these are patches wow. that have been sewn on or ironed on to this jacket. No, these are hand embroidered. You can see here, you know, on the inside with the back here, that is basically just like freehand drawing on a denim oh jacket. Oh my goodness. And if you go back and you watch a bunch of the prize tagouts we did earlier this week, you could have seen that in the background. It's like Chekhov's prize. We were saving it. Yeah, no, and there are so many okay. cool things about this jacket. Here's something I actually just discovered yes! <laughs> like 20 minutes ago. There's another hidden Korok in the wait, collar. Wait, there's two? Yeah, yeah, there's another one. We, we okay, popped wait, the there... collar, and yeah, you know, you do like... There's another one. I no longer think collar. there's only two. Popped the collar. I think there's like 400 something. There's got to be more <laughs> hidden Koroks on this. But even without all the hidden ones, there's so many cool video game symbols and references on the you know it's the front, a, there's a beautiful Games Done Quick logo yeah. and SNES controller on the back. It's just an absolutely fantastic piece, head to toe. You know, genuinely one of a kind. It's amazing. And just like we said, $50 donation. Get it in now. We only have one run left. So if you haven't gotten your donation in, just do it. Also make sure, again, like we said, 125 over the total of the week. You should be like, wait. I don't need it 100 total. Get that 25 in. Just fill it out. Get it in. Get entered into the grand prize. And remember, you don't have to specifically donate for the prizes, right, Meg? In fact, what you should donate for is that Path of Pain incentive we have over. Yes. So that's being run by one of my friends, Insomnia, uh, who is an incredible runner, and we absolutely want to see that. I'm so excited now, for, for the, to watch uh, for Insomnia close out our... Hollow Knight, why don't you give us a quick rundown of what we're going to expect from right. Path of Pain? So Path of Pain is like a like a very difficult platforming section yeah. that is in, I believe it's part of one of the DLCs. No, it's just, it's in the White it's Palace. Just in, yeah, okay. I, think I it can't do it. in a DLC though. I, yeah. I did it for I'm the first sure time. I did it for the DLC first part. time. What? Yeah, I'm pretty sure okay, it was I only played, DLC. I played the game <laughs> late when all the DLC was in it. That's the only version of Hollow Knight The important thing is, have either of you beaten it? Yes. I, yes. I'm a, I'm a skilled gamer. All right. Well, <laughs> I've been owned. It's, to be fair, it's very <laughs> difficult. It is an incredible feat to see. You know, again, it's one of those things that like, oh, yeah, I can beat that. You know, you say at home under no time constraint in front right. of no yes, people. Yes, yes. 
by yourself with as many retries as you want in front of a you know studio audience death as the fine you know the finale of a marathon as an incentive I know. it's a lot of pressure it's a lot of precision platforming but we want to see it happen. We, ha- we have to see it. And Swami's just going to crush it. Swami's going to just... Well, we've been hyping it up about how difficult it is, and she's just going to be like, I know what I'm doing, and crush I, it. She will make it look easy. It is not easy. Exactly. So we got we to gotta don- get your donations in now. Don't wait. We need to make it happen. Indeed. Get them in. Get them in for that incentive specifically. And remember, if you have any questions about that incentive or its progress or any of the amazing prizes that you can win... By donating, you can always head over to gamesdonequick.com. It's got all the information you need on the event, all of the information on the speed run left in the, the event. Speed the speed run. The speed run. <laughs> Hollow Knight is now officially the, the speed run. run. You can write that down. <laughs> the incentive left. Don't miss it. Make sure it happens. And of course, all of the amazing prizes yep. that we have. Now, this was our last prize segment. So there are a couple of things I really quickly want to say before we call it a day and send you off to the final run of the marathon yeah. with Hollow Knight. Um, you know, first off, I just want to mention that every single prize we have at this event, every single one from, you know, the smallest perler to this amazing jacket that I'm, you know, it's so cool. I'm going to put it in front of me. I am less important <laughs> to have in this shot than the jacket is. All of these prizes uh, you know, came to us because someone said, you know, hey, Sent, I, I have this thing, or I'm an artist, or I'm a, I'm a craftsperson, or I'm someone who wants to make something cool. What could I do for, you know, the next GDQ event? What could I do for the next Frame Fatales event? And we started talking, and something came of it. Yeah. And I am so grateful for all of the artists and craftspeople and just people who had cool stuff that they wanted to provide to the event who have done so. And if you sitting out there are one of those people, please get in contact with us. Uh, you can find all of you know the GDQ contact info on the website. Uh, you can specifically contact me about prizes at prizes at gamesdonequick.com. Love to talk to you. So excited about every single prize. And thank you all so much for sending them in. And, you know, Court May, um, as... Frame Fatale leads. I just wanted to thank both of you for, you know, giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, you know, Malala Fund and their vision for the future is is a cause that I resonate with. And I'm I'm glad that over, you know, the past couple of years, I've been able to help all of you out, been able to show off these prizes, been yeah. able to uh, hopefully give you all some, you know, <laughs> confidence. And if not through example, then through my failures no! <laughs> in, in getting out here and showing off all of these amazing things. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's been a pleasure and an honor. We so learned it all so from much. you. No matter, yeah, whatever <laughs> for, for happens, better or worse. we learned it all from you. <laughs> and, you know, prize segments, I got to say, are some of, like, some of, if not the favorite parts of the event for us, you know, as we run around, we, we have so much fun being here in the studio, getting to just laugh with you, be with you. You make us better performers. You know, it's, thank you so much for, for getting to work with us and for, you know, helping me, you know, become a part of this team. I didn't have this opportunity, the intern opportunity until you opened it up. <laughs> So, really, I owe all of it to like, you. Like I said, May, you're not an intern anymore. I'm a co- You're, you're, you're a, part of a the a cohort, cohort now? Yes, yeah. Cohort. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I also, I do want to say one quick thing. Um, before, I think we... we and Why are you all staring at me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you said you wanted to say one more thing. I'm, I'm focusing in. I'm focusing I want to say in. one quick thing, and that is... Uh, so also. That mentioned all the prizes sent in um, come from like viewers and people just want to support the event. And a lot of those viewers are also members of the Frame yeah. Tales community specifically. There are members in uh, our community who like organized nights together to make prizes together. A lot of them are runners in the event. Some of them are in studio workers uh, who are helping us, who are here helping us throughout the entire week. And I just want to thank everyone and of course everybody who sent stuff in as well. Yeah, I agree. Like there's a there's a prize craft chat like in the Discord where people are sharing their progress. They're so excited for for what's coming next and if you want to join that, feel free. Just you can go to framefatals.com and find information about how to join up and you know, you don't have to just be a speedrunner to contribute to this event as you've seen. Yeah, and and again, don't don't be shy, don't be afraid. Uh, I I love to talk to everyone about their prize country. Somebody actually, one of the studio workers brought a prize to the studio. Yes. And was just like, hey, Sven, you know, I'm not sure if you could use this, but I figured I'd bring it in. And I was like, yes, this is this is beautiful. We we need this. Thank you so much. So again, please please reach out. But 
I think that just about does it for us. We've almost reached $150,000 from a Lala fund. I know we can get there. And if we get there, we're basically right there for Path of Pain if you assign your donations to that incentive. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. But for the final time, from me and my cohorts on this beautiful couch, we're going to send you back to the front. Don't go anywhere. You do not want to miss the finale of Frame Fatales 2023 when Insomnia plays Hollow Knight. Well, thank you so much for that amazing prize team. I don't know about you, chat, but I'm certainly feeling the feels after all of that. Feel free to add a comment in your donation shouting out our amazing prize team. Let them know how awesome they are, how much you appreciate those prizes, how much you feel and empathize with May having been absolutely owned by the rest of the couch. Uh, seriously, though, we couldn't do any of this without all of you, so thank you. Uh, and speaking of the excellent work you've all done so far, let's talk more about that Path of Pain incentive. We are currently at $6,815 out of a needed 10000 thousand. That is amazing. If I were to do the illegal math, and for all of you, I will, that puts us at about 67, 68% of the way through. We only have this upcoming Hollow Knight run to meet this incentive. So everyone, we're just going to need your help to finish this off. But so many people have already been sending in the love. So let's uh, read out some of these donations and... Uh, See if anybody's going to help me with saving that grub. So we have $25 from Barbecue Steve. Uh, for the sake of all those who could not. For the sake of all those who gave up. For glory. For the harder way. For the path of pain. Them speedrun style. We have $25 from uh, Suika Jakin. Uh, donating to Hollow Knight Path of Pain because it is so much fun. Trans rights or human rights, less than three. And I've been told that our Hollow Knight team is ready. So let's welcome them in with all of your cutest grubby motes and just general cheering. Take it away, friends. <laughs> 